All right, so I think things are improving. I made things worse by trying to really just squeeze as much as I could when I first noticed that it grew to this, this about this size. It was just a little pin, little little just a little pea before, and then it just grew to about about this size when I first discovered it about 11 days ago or so. <clears throat> And then it just got much, much worse. Squeezing it was such a mistake. And, and uh, it's been uh, since then where it got back down to this. It probably is not going to shrink back down anymore. But what's, what's going to happen next? I've been trying to reduce how much I carry on my shoulder. Uh, I won't be able to really reduce that until I get my bicycle basket, which will be in a couple days through Amazon. All right, and then yeah, I'll keep this magnet on for the rest of my life, I guess. If, if I'm gonna have this thing, I'm gonna keep this magnet on for the rest of my life. I'm not gonna ever take it off. It's a tension getter. And since I do have this little bump, if, uh, you know, whoever's watching this at this point in my video, I'll challenge you to maybe find a name for my new pet, my new pet cyst. Might as well give it a name, because I'm not, I don't have the money to go to a doctor. I'm not going to, you know, go to the emergency room and take up their, those resources and, and then just claim, oh, I'm poor, I'm not, I can't pay, you guys have to provide this service for me, I'm poor, and and then walk out and, and then thumb my nose at them. I'm not going to do that to the doctors, all right? It's it's my obligation. I, I cause I probably caused this myself, you know, I, I gotta pay you that price. I think I was just it's just dirtiness and and putting pressure on it and not clean not not changing out my shirts. And that's it. So I just gotta move on and live with it. Live with my new pet cyst. Uh, besides that, uh, my health seems okay. I rolled up all the windows to improve sound. It's not that hot. It's midday. It's like almost one o'clock and it's just beautiful. It's cloudy and it's cool outside. Uh, and it's the, it's supposed to be the hottest time of the year between July 15th to August 15th. I find, I found in Wisconsin, I found in a lot of places I've been that it's, it's generally the hottest time of the year, but it's very comfortable here around the San Francisco area. <clears throat> just so nice. I can't speak highly enough of it. I hate to just have to run here every summer, you know. I I don't want to suffer though. Being a car camper, heat stroke, man, that's just cold stroke is pretty bad. Okay, I've suffered that. I've suffered welts on my face from the Wisconsin colds, the negative twenty degree weather. You get welts; those are like um, early stage frostbites. Cause I didn't turn black, they're just red spots on my face, and I was suffering, I was feeling a lot of pain. But heat stroke, oh my god, that's awful too. The extremes. And this car is a sauna, it's it's a greenhouse sauna, and it takes till midnight for things to cool down. Alright, it takes a while when it gets really hot, when I can't find a good shade spot. But here, I have no complaints, actually, so that's not a part of any health problems. My energy's good, actually. I, I skipped breakfast this morning. I just had lunch. This thing, it says it serves eight. I believe they mean eight servings, because, or serves six, because I ate it, the whole thing, no problem, in one sitting. And I still ate extra stuff. I do have a big appetite, but... I think they underreported that serving size. Okay, maybe serving serves six kids or something. But I, I, I skipped breakfast and I got really low on energy. I went out and just explored, bicycled, walked around the area, and I got tired. So I stopped at a library just to sit down and relax and let let uh, whatever other nutrients I had flow through me and and. Uh, get to my muscles so I could continue my journey. And then I got to the grocery store and had an emergency enchilada. I will say my sex drive went up a little bit uh, yesterday and it should be no surprise 
I had fenugreek. I mixed fenugreek in with a gallon jug of milk and let it sit and then the the flavors, the flavor from fenugreek gets in the milk and makes it taste nice. But I forgot, you know, it's been a while since I've had fenugreek. I forgot it does manipulate the testosterone and it, it pretty much raise, it jacks up the, the sex drive. Okay, it's been a while since I've had it. I mean, I can't explain any other way why I, my sex drive increased. And it's, it's temporary. It's just an herbal, it's just an herbal effect. I appreciate it. I really, you know, fenugreek, I, I really got, what really got my attention about fenugreek was that it's, it's considered anabolic, which helps you build muscle, which, <laughs> um, the first thing it does, I think, is, is builds up, uh, the, the reservoirs in your, in your nether regions, and then, you know, if there's ex, if there's any extra, then I'll go to the muscles too. But uh, yeah, second, I find it interesting. It says that it makes your body odor smell more like maple syrup. Now I'm not sure uh, how true that is. I find that interesting. You gotta like eat a lot of it, and I don't want to get into the habit of eating too much. I like mixing up what my herbs, okay. Uh, and I was and it was great. I was able to go to a store in in uh, Half Half Moon Bay and get herbs I don't normally consume. In fact, this marshmallow, I consumed a little bit of this. I don't know how to consume this properly because what how I had it is just I didn't like it. I tried mashing it up in my mortar and pestle and consuming it as is. It just wasn't that appetizing. But I gotta say, what little I did swallow down, my my uh, motility really did seem to increase in a, in a unique way. I, I was, um, I have to admit, it's a, it's a health channel. I pooped two days ago. I, I pooped like three or four times. And I was like, what's going on here? And I'm like, well, okay, yeah, that's right. I, the day before, I did have marshmallow. Because marshmallow is a different kind of laxative. There's laxatives that make your intestines squeeze. There's laxatives that moisten things. There's there's laxatives that'll dilate your intestines. You know, there's there's all kinds of little effects that these phytochemicals and herbs have that affect how your body is is processing and and all that. Like the fenugreek, I, it's it's just a different fenugreek is a different way of increasing your sex drive for a little bit. You can block testosterone. You can. Or you can block estrogen. You can raise testosterone. You can, you can free up other androgens, and there's just you know because we got like hundreds and hundreds of hormones in our body, okay. So different herbs affect those those hormones in different ways. It's very fascinating. I, I like that's why I really love having variety in my diet. Uh, sometimes I I don't quite get what I get the variety I'm looking for. And I definitely suffer from it. Sometimes, though, I'm, I will mix and match maybe the wrong things that could cause problems. But I mean, they're herbs. They're not. They're not extracted drugs in any way. They're not herbal extracts. They're the whole. Okay, it's not like I'm having cocaine. I'm having the coca leaf, which I could. I'd love to have coca leaf, but that's hard to get into the the our country still. So I'm gonna end this this here. No other complaints.